Hello, my name is Brad Beltman. I'm a distance learning student out of Des Moines, Iowa, and this is my first semester in the master's program. The tutorial I'm going to run you through today is on SSL Strip. Uh, SSL Strip comes with Backtrack. Uh, it was released in 2009 at Black Hat DC by Moxie Marlin Spike. Uh, if you've never seen any videos on Moxie speaking or read any articles on him, uh, go check him out because Moxie is a really interesting guy. Um, SSL Strip expands on the SSL Sniff tool that he released way back in 2002. So he's been uh, studying this subject for quite a while. Uh, it requires a man in the middle attack to succeed, which we'll demonstrate here in a second. We're just going to do a simple ARP spoof um, using the conveniently named ARP spoof tool in Backtrack. Uh, SSL Strip doesn't attack the encryption of SSL, but it acts as a proxy between the client and the server. It's written in Python, and you can see the requirements there. So first, an attacker is going to perform a man-in-the-middle attack, redirecting traffic through their machine. Uh, SSL Strip is going to sniff that traffic, and it's going to look for any HTTP redirects to HTTPS, and basically just strips out the S and just sends a standard HTTP request. <coughs> it communicates with the client in clear text, um, but creates a normal SSL connection with the server. So from the server's perspective, um, everything looks normal. It's going to be completely indistinguishable from a, a, a legitimate request. Uh, by default, it's only going to capture the post requests, which is going to be mostly what the attackers are going to be interested in anyway. Um, but you can also set it to sniff all SSL traffic to the server or all SSL and HTTP traffic to the server. So the reason we care about this tool is because HTTPS is supposed to be what's protecting us against man-in-the-middle attacks. Uh, when people are using what they think is a secure connection, they typically don't hesitate to send passwords or other sensitive data. And so you can start to think of some really scary scenarios uh, if you combine a public wireless network with ARP spoofing and SSL strip. Uh, like I said, from the server perspective, nothing's out of the ordinary, so there's no protections that can be done from the server side. Um, as we'll demonstrate here in a second, <clears throat> from the client's perspective, uh, there's not a lot of difference between the encrypted and non-encrypted session, at least not visually anyway, um, and wouldn't typically be noticed by, by most of your end users, uh, which is a little frightening because at this point, it w it's completely dependent on them to recognize that something's up. So ways you can defend against this, uh, like we said, there's nothing on the server side. Uh, for yourself, you can use secure wireless networks, um, or secure your own for that matter. Uh, I pick on wireless networks here because it makes this t attack a lot easier. Uh, but remember that this can be carried out over a traditional uh, network as well. You can get software that looks for and protects against ARP, ARP spoofing attacks. So that might be an option, uh, but remember ARP spoofing is just the way that we're, we're going to accomplish this. In this demo, there are other ways, so it's not it's not a silver bullet there. Uh, be alert. Always look for HTTPS in the address bar. Uh, if you're going to a particularly sensitive site, uh, make sure you type in HTTPS yourself. Don't just type in uh, like PayPal.com and let it redirect you. Make sure you type it in yourself. Newer browsers are getting some better visual clues. My example there is from IE9. Uh, you can see the green address bar from PayPal. Uh, but you got to remember that not all sites use the extended validation certificate like PayPal does. Uh, so there will be a fair amount of legitimate sites that aren't going to have the green address bar. And then remember to educate your users. Uh, make sure that they're watching for HTTPS in the address bar as well. Make sure they know the difference between HTTP and HTTPS. Uh, eventually, HSTS could fix this if it becomes a standard. Uh, it's currently in draft form, so the, the future is unknown at this point, but that it would fix this exact scenario. Uh, this first link I have here is the video of Moxie talking about SSL Strip when he revealed it at Black Hat. The second one is some more information on HSTS if you're interested. And the third one is Moxie's site where uh, SSL Strip is available for download. Alright, so I'm going to jump into the demonstration portion now. I have a fully patched Windows XP machine running IE8 here, and I went out and visited PayPal earlier and just did a quick capture of the traffic. Uh, and so as you can see, here's my GET request, um, and it gives me the uh, the uh, 301 uh, it redirects me to HTTPS there. 
uh, which is pretty typical. At this point, I also want to show you the ARP table. I'm going to ping my default gateway here so we get an entry. So you can see there's my default gateway <coughs> and there's the MAC address. I'm going to jump over to the Backtrack machine now. Uh, you can just uh, find SSL strip in the pen test slash web slash SSL strip directory or you can find it by going to Applications, Backtrack, uh, Exploitation Tools, Web Exploitation Tools, and SSL strip. A couple of things we need to do before we start our attack, or our spoofing attack I should say. First thing we need to tell the machine to uh, to forward all packets not addressed to it. And easy way to do that is just using this echo command. All right, so that's going to just put this this IP forward line into this IPv4 file, and it's uh, going to forward all traffic for us. We also need to create an IP tables tool that's going to redirect the traffic that we're interested in to port 10,000. 10,000 is the port that the SSL strip listens to by default. So if you're going to use a different port, make sure you uh, change your IP tables command uh, appropriately. And remember that this command is case sensitive, so you will need to use uppercase letters here where I did uh, so the command runs successfully. <coughs> so that creates a tool, and we're just going to forward any destination port 80 to port 10,000. And so at this point, we're ready to start our ARP spoofing attack. So, command here, we're telling it this is the interface we want to use. Here's our target. Um, this is my XP machine, uh, but remember this can be carried out over a, a full network segment, so you could have multiple victims. Um, I'm just going to run it just against my XP machine today, though. Uh, and this is the address that we want to spoof. So, this is just going to kind of run in the background. You can see it's sending ARP replies uh, with the spoofed MAC address. So if we switch back to our victim machine, so now you can see the default gateway and my attacking machine here have the exact same MAC address. So we have successfully poisoned, poisoned the ARP cache on our victim here. So I'm going to let that run in the background. I'm going to switch over to another tab here. And we're ready to start SSL strip. So you can see there's not a lot of options to SSL strip. It's a pretty simple, straightforward tool to use. Uh, first one is completely optional, but this will specify a file to write to, which we'll, we'll use here in a second. Uh, P is default, and it's only going to get the post requests. S, as you can see, is just the SSL traffic. A is for all SSL and HTTP traffic. Uh, dash L is where you can change your port that you're listening on. Dash F is kind of a fun one. Um, SSL strip will come with a, a lock icon, uh, or you can download your own or create your own, whatever you want to do. But if you specify that, it will put the, the little icon up in the address bar. Um, so if we choose to use a lock icon, then it's just going to be further visual, you know, visual indicators to the user that, that they're running a secure connection uh, just to further drop their guard. I'm not going to use it in this example. I tried it uh, with Backtrack in my IE8. Uh, browser and for whatever reason I have that turned on it's altering the the uh, the way the page looks uh, it doesn't look quite right so uh, be careful if you're using that one you could get some undesirable results with that uh, K is to kill sessions again careful with that that could tip off users if they have to 
uh, suddenly reauthenticate their the application that they're in if they've got a, a session already established. So, really, the only thing that we need to run, or the only option we need to run this successfully is well, we don't even need any options. We can just start it and let it go. I'm going to specify a file to write to here. I'm just going to call it capture for the credentials we're going to try to capture here. Gonna let that run here in the background. Now I'm going to switch back to the victim machine. Going to pull up IE. And I'm just going to type in paypal.com. So here you can see the site. Everything looks pretty normal. Uh, note there, the note up here that there's no S in the address bar, no lock icons up here or anything like that. The nice thing about PayPal though is they did include this little lock icon right here for us. Um, so that's just going to reinforce with you know your typical user that hey, I'm using a secure connection, uh, and it happens to be right by where you're going to enter your credentials. <clears throat> so I'm obviously not going to use any real credentials here. So since I'm not using real credentials, it's uh, going to come back and say, hey, I don't know who you are. Uh, but remember that SSL strip is communicating over SSL with the server, so the server doesn't think anything's up, and it's going to return the actual page for them. So there you can see that it said, hey, I don't, I don't recognize that. But over on our backtrack machine, now if I look at that capture file that we specified, <clears throat> here we can see that it captured a, a secure post to PayPal. There's the uh, login that I used, and here's the password that was able to capture. So I'm going to jump back to my victim machine. Oh, actually, before I do that, let me restart SSL script. let me get rid of that file I'll reuse that command let it run in the background I'm gonna jump back over to the victim machine and this time I'm actually gonna type in HTTPS colon slash slash www.paypal.com So without the redirect, you can see that I still have HTTPS up here. Uh, I got the lock icon, and I can see that VeriSign cert verifies that it's PayPal. Um, the rest of the site, though, looks identical. Uh, but SSL strip was not able to take out the HTTPS in this case. So at this point, I could try to log in, and SSL strip cannot sniff that. So we'll log in again as an experiment, come back to our, our attacker machine, and you can see our capture file is empty because we actually did establish a secure connection that, that SSL strip was unable to sniff those posts to. So now that we're done with the attack, we can come back over here where we're running the ARP spoofing attack. You can kill that with a control C and then you can see it recorded the MAC address of the default gateway that was there before so it just it just sends out some replies to reestablish that as the MAC address uh, so that's gonna fix the ARP table um, and at this point the attacker is out of the completely out of the conversation and the client and server have no idea that he was ever there so that concludes the tutorial I hope you enjoyed it thanks